One of the things I really want you to do when you're thinking about assessing and, and measuring your clients online is to throw the idea of particularly valid assessments out of the window. Um, when you're assessing clients online, you wanna actually favor reliability over validity. So let me tell you what I mean about that. You actually don't really know whether the assessments that you're doing are actually valid. Um, and, and this is actually the case in the gym as well. Those, those body fat scales, most gyms use some sort of uh, science called bioelectrical impedance, which is like a body fat scale, or you put like electrodes on, on your arms in different places and it measures them. Um, that's a really, really flawed science. That's like a three to 5% error margin, um, up to six to eight actually, depending on the scale. And so it's not even a valid assessment. All these trainers who are being taught different movement screens who are saying to their clients that their glutes aren't firing or they don't have enough space in their acetabulum or whatever it is, the reality of it is you actually don't know that. Um, there, there, there's too many conflicting things. And so I would argue passionately that the assessments that you're doing in the gym aren't valid anyway. Regardless, we have all been trained to assume that we are going for validity in the gym with our assessments. I want you to throw that out the window. I want you to not even pretend with online measuring assessments um, that it's gonna be valid. What I want you to flip the switch and say, okay, I'm gonna pick reliable assessments. I'm gonna pick assessments that I know a client can do at home that's gonna be reliable from one to the next, to the next, to the next. So when we're looking at weight management or body fat management, um, body fat scales, not reliable at all, particularly if the client's doing them at home. My guess is your clients don't have access to a DEXA machine, bod pod, or underwater weighing. So you're not gonna get a reliable, you're not gonna get a reliable or valid body fat assessment. It's just not gonna happen. What you can do though, is you can teach them to take a couple tape measures. I mean, you can send them a tape measure, for example, it's like two bucks, they can go buy their own. All tape measures are the same. It's a beautiful thing about them. And, and it's really easy to cue your client and teach them how to do tape measures themselves or have a partner or spouse or whoever help them with it. Those are gonna be a reliable measurement time to time to time to time. Um, same thing with weight on a scale. Now I know that trainers often don't like weight on a scale, but the reality of it is, is this is a reliable measure. And, and as long as you can smooth it out. And so there's an app for EOS and there's, um, that's called Happy Scale, and there's one, I think it's called Libra, for uh, the Android system as well. And what it does is you put in your weight every single day, and what it does is it smooths out. So it shows the trend. It doesn't show the day-to-day -day fluctuations. Um, really, really useful because you know that your clients are probably going to weigh themselves anyway. You may as well be a part of it and get ahead of it. So that's when you're looking at like weight and fat loss, that's one. For um, movement assessment type stuff, like I said, you're probably not going to be able to do valid assessments in the gym anyway. A lot of the assessments that we're kind of trained to do over time in our, in our certification or in continuing education courses, like they're good, but you certainly can't rely on them being valid. And, um, and so what I would recommend is you, you decide on perhaps a couple of movement screens if you think that they're very important for the client. And I would argue with you that most clients probably don't need movement screens. Um, certainly not as much as they're done in the gym. But if you really think that the client needs it or if it's a big part of your practice, then you, you train the client to do it over Skype. And then you make sure you incorporate that into your packages because you kind of got to watch it on video. Um, and then the final thing is assess things like rest and recovery. Those are really good indicators to how somebody's doing. And, and, and keep track of things like pain tolerance and DOMS and make sure that the client understands that. That's actually the best that you could do. Most clients, most clients don't really need movement assessment so much as, as they need to not hurt themselves and keep training. And so if you, if you keep them safe, as long as they can keep training, they're gonna get good results. It's less about um, overall kind of feeling like you're gonna, you're gonna improve their movement quality using a, a, some sort of movement assessment. But if you do wanna do a movement assessment, I mean, that's totally cool. You can absolutely do a movement assessment, but understand that um, you're gonna have to show up on video for it and you should incorporate it into your packages because it's gonna take a fair amount of time yours.